When you hear the term STEM, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and math, how does it make you feel? Does it send a strike of fear through your heart or a shiver down your spine? Does it bring you back to that high school chemistry or biology or math class where you felt confused, inadequate, or maybe even scared of the subject? If this feeling doesn't apply to you, you're one of the lucky ones. If you're sweating just thinking about the idea of a math equation, you're someone who's just like me. For most of my life, I had this inner monologue about STEM that told me things like science is hard and math is hard and maybe it's for some people, but it's just not for you. But what if I told you a different story about STEM? What if I told you that there are things that we do every day that actually make us scientists, engineers, and mathematicians? Think about this. When you get a tough stain on your clothes and you try adding a bunch of sprays and home remedies to get that stain out, you're thinking like a scientist. And when you see something wrong with your car and you decide to try fixing it yourself, you're thinking like an engineer. And when you do something as simple as calculate a restaurant tip, you're thinking like a mathematician. You see, people involved in STEM fields are just people who lead their lives with curiosity. They ask interesting questions and try to find interesting answers and solutions to those questions. I think we all do that. I think Everyone is a STEM person. But for most of my life, I didn't feel that way. When I was a kid growing up in Kentucky, I loved playing outside. I was not one of those kids that you would see playing organized sports. <laughs> I was the kid in the field next to the playground gathering flowers to make flower chains or watching bees pollinating or catching snowflakes on my gloves in the winter and wondering where these beautiful things came from. Once, my friends and I found this plant that we thought was so cool and so special that we dug it up and planted it somewhere else, safe from weed whackers and lawn mowers, and brought cups of water every day at recess to keep it alive. As kids, we're always outside observing and collecting samples and doing little experiments. All those things that we do when our minds are open and curious. But for me, my love for STEM didn't translate to school. Around sophomore year of high school, the inner monologue was really established and it said things like, math is scary and science is hard because there are so many things you don't understand, and the only scientist out there is like Albert Einstein or something. Sophomore year stands out to me as a turning point because that is where I met my sworn enemy, pre-calculus. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I was failing a class halfway through the year. I was distraught, I didn't know what to do, and that inner monologue was running wild, saying things like, this is all your fault, and you're dumb, and you can't do it, so you shouldn't even try. I was really desperate to turn that grade around when I heard about a nice teacher named Mrs. Law. Mrs. Law was a math teacher at my high school who would open her door after school and help any student who came into her classroom with their math homework. And when the final bell rang on the first day that I walked into her classroom, I knew that it was a special place. With the flip of her short, shiny, dark bob, Mrs. Law would rock walk around the class asking questions like, okay, what happens next? And, you know, what do we do? We did this last time, let's try it again that way. She was a perfect combination of gentle, kind, but also sarcastic and sharp. She was the perfect combination of things that helped build confidence in young people, while also giving them ownership 
over their own growth. And I'll never forget one day I raised my hand and waved Mrs. Law over and she came over and she looked at my paper and she looked at me and she looked at my paper and she said, Chloe, I actually think you know how to do this one on your own. I think you know this. And there's something about when she looked me in the eye and she said that to me that made me think, wow, actually, I think I do know this. I think a lot of us have had teachers in our lives who have sent us on a trajectory of thinking about ourselves in a different way. When teachers like Mrs. Law both build confidence in their students and teach pre-calculus at the same time, they're thinking like scientists. And after months of work on that math homework with Mrs. Law and that confidence building, I got an A in pre-calculus. <laughs> now, it's really incredible what a change of mindset can do, especially for a young person. With new ideas about myself and what I was capable of, I decided to take a class that sounded scary but interesting, Advanced Placement Environmental Science. And I loved it. I realized that environmental science is something that touches all of our lives. Whether we desire to breathe clean air, or drink clean water, or swim in clean oceans, or even eat food. Every time I would come across a tough concept or question, my inner monologue was actually pretty quiet. It was replaced by the voice of Mrs. Law saying, you know this. I realized over the course of that semester that environmental science was a passion, so much so that I majored in natural resources and environmental science at the University of Kentucky. <laughs> and now I look back on that time and think about all the ups and downs in biology and chemistry, but I remember walking across that stage on that graduation day from UK thinking, man, I think I'm a scientist. And <laughs> the seed that Mrs. Law planted sophomore year of high school grew into a career trajectory that I never could have expected before I met her. Now, just a few years later, I'm almost finished earning my PhD in Earth System Science at Florida International University in Miami, Florida. And I don't know if you'll believe this, but part of getting that PhD means that I get to teach college freshmen who are mostly non-science majors introduction to environmental science. And some of those students who are really not far in age from me when I was in Mrs. Law's class come into my classroom. And every semester I ask them the same question that I asked all of you, how do you feel about science and math? And every semester I hear very similar responses. Science is horrible and math is not my strongest subject. And my personal favorite thing that I hear every semester, I'm only in this class because it's required to graduate. And once I'm done here, I never have to think about science ever again. And I'm, I take that in. Okay, yeah, great, okay. And I just do my best to build confidence in STEM in my students just like Mrs. Law did for me. I ask questions. I try to find news articles and my own lived experiences and live demonstrations to try to teach this subject that I'm so passionate about to people who maybe don't understand it. I do my best to silence those little voices, those ones that my students have and the one that I used to have that might tell us all that we don't belong in STEM. I love this process dearly 
Building confidence is my favorite thing to do as a PhD student. But I also am propelled by a deep conviction that science is entirely misunderstood for so many. Now, some of you guys might be sitting here thinking, okay, good for you, Chloe. I'm so glad that you found your passion, and sometimes I like to get some stains out of my shirts, but I know that I'm not a STEM person. You can't get me. But I'm here to tell you a different story about STEM. I think that there is a place in STEM fields for everyone in this room, yes, all of you. With all the pressing problems of the day, like global climate change, pollution, biodiversity loss, and many others, it is urgently needed for all of us to ask questions, make observations, and get curious about the world around us. So, if you're one of those people who was sweating at the thought of a math equation at the beginning of this talk, I wanna take a quick moment to try to turn that volume down on that self-talk for a few of you. The next time you calculate that restaurant tip, I want you to hear my voice in your head saying, you did it. Just for right now, you're a mathematician. And the next time you have to use some jumper cables to start a car battery, which I know is annoying, I want you to hear my voice in your head saying, you are an engineer. And the next time you use different quantities of kindness and strategy and patience to teach someone else something new, I want you to hear my voice in your head saying, thank you, you're just like Mrs. Law, and you are a scientist. So, now that I've tried to build up some science knowledge and confidence in a few of you, whether you're actively involved in a scientific project in your community or taking a college science or engineering or math class or simply solving everyday problems in the world around you, you are a STEM person. Your unique perspective and efforts will solve some of the world's most complex problems. STEM people are you and me and all of us. That little girl who was watering her flowers on the playground was a STEM person back then, and I'm proud to report that she's a STEM person right now. I hope that the little voice, that one that tells you to run away at the sound of science technology, engineering, and math is just a little quieter now. Thank you. <laughs>